Hi. I'm going to make a Victorian style mug today. It's very functional, completely usable, but with a little extra charm with these beautiful little handmade flowers. First, we center the clay. I always have my wheel on at a high speed. I use a lot of water, keeping the clay nice and slippery and wet so that it slides into center. As long as I'm braced and holding still, the clay follows my form and goes right into the middle of the bat. Make my little well. I'm always adding water, so I always have to take the water away also. If you don't take the water away, it'll seep through the bottom of your pot and there will be no bottom of your pot. Making my pulls, bringing the clay up taller. Best is to work with a volcano shape. That way I can get as much height as I need. And then once I get all my height, then I can add in some curves and some more character to the shape. There we go. So that's plenty of height. So now I start adding my shape defining a little band around the top. I'll go back down in there, add a little curve to the base of the mug. I find it really important to exhale whenever I'm doing anything important. Even slow breaths helps keep me really steady and not wiggling. So then I would let this firm up and then pull a handle. So to pull a handle, I take a piece of clay and I kind of roll it into a carrot shape. Once I have that nice carrot shape, then I hold it nice and firm in one hand, and use the other hand to extend and smooth out the length. And it only takes a little bit to get that nice handle shape. Okay, once I've got that pulled, then I leave it rest for a while, hanging so that it can just firm up. Then I can put it on my mug. Now that it's firmed up a little bit, I will put the handle on. So I take the clay, it's been hanging like this and it's nice and firm now, and I cut it, kind of beveling the edge. So I have a lot of surface area to attach. And then I decide where I'm going to attach it. I like to put it on where, um, down low, below the rim of the cup, when people attach their handle all the way up here, it's a little harder to hang on to in my taste. Um, so I like to have it down a little lower. And when you attach a handle all the way up at the rim, sometimes you uh, misshape the round opening, which may take away from the appeal of the cup. So I'm always careful to place my handle at least a half inch, maybe an inch below the rim of the mug. And of course, I want to score and slip this on really carefully. Supporting the inside of the mug while I'm pressing and smoothing the handle on the outside. And then some people are more of a fist handle. Um, 
and some people are more of a two finger handle and sometimes I just like an elegant one finger handle. There we go. So I'll cut that off. And just go ahead and slip that on. Again, supporting the inside. And sometimes it gets a little messy, so I take a firm bristle brush with uh, water and smooth out any of those extra finger marks and sticky pieces of clay. There. So now I start to add the decorations. This is where it gets really fun. So I'll take some clay and I'll make a little flower. Roll it into a bead and then kind of press it into a very shallow dish and roll that up. And then I'll start making petals. Just to save time, sometimes I roll one petal after another. I roll it around and around, flatten it, round and around, flatten it, and get a bunch of petals made. I usually do odd numbers. Everything I do in art is with odd numbers. And we'll just see one more and see how that goes. Take the little bud and attach the first petal, smoothing it in at the bottom. And the next. And the next. Keep going around and around until it opens up into a blossom. There we go. Sweet. I'll cut the excess off. And that'll look pretty up there. And then I'll make some leaves and some more flowers and some swirls and beads. Here's a little leaf. Just roll it out, pinch one end, use my needle tool to draw the little veins. So, a little swirl. Swirls are so easy. They're sweet and easy to make. Okay, so then we decide where to put them. This is the fun part. It's all fun, actually. Right. Now the mug really starts to take form and look even more Victorian. I try to get out of the habit of doing everything so symmetrical. One in the middle, one on the right, one on the left. I'm going to do my best not to get caught up in that trap because it's Victorian and even more contemporary if I don't do everything completely symmetrical. Now the idea is that it's completely functional so I have to be aware of how I'm going to hold it. So every once in a while, I'm going to put my finger in there and just double check. I'd be really bummed if I spent all this time on a mug that I could never use. And I'd be kind of insulted if somebody said, that's okay, it can be a pencil holder. I don't know, I've got some weird bias against that. So we're not going there. Don't even get me started. So just keep adding them. And... 
making it look fun. Filling in everywhere, just kind of schmutzing it up, you know? Make it look as sweet as can be. Not without weighing it down too much, too. You know, there's um, a difference between elegant and gaudy. And I don't want to do the gaudy. I'm not doing the same thing on each side. I am purposely going in different places. This isn't the kind of mug that you'd throw in the pickup truck to go on a long hiking trip or camping. This is the kind that when it's snowing outside or you've had a long day at work, you just want to snuggle up and enjoy some long deep breaths and relax. Thanks for watching.